So you need experience to get a job, but you need a job to get experience. So what do you do? So this is what I like to call the chicken and the egg problem. Are you supposed to get a job first or get experience first? I struggled through this problem 10 years ago, and you might be struggling through this problem right now. The good news is there's something you can do about it. Whether you are still in school, out of school, or looking to transition your career into robotics, there's something you can do. I have reviewed hundreds of resumes and interviewed a bunch of candidates, and the main thing that I care about is if their experience matches the job description that's out there. Later on at the end of this video, I'm going to walk you through a step-by-step -step framework process how you can choose the right project for the job that you want. So let's say I'm hiring someone and I want someone who has AI and machine learning skills, especially for vision applications. What do you think I'm going to be looking for when I'm reviewing their resumes? So the idea is the better match your resume has with the job description, the more likely you can get the job. So to actually get your resume to match the job description that you want, you need to make sure that you're starting to build the experiences for the job that you want. So depending on what stage in life you're in, there's different techniques or strategies you can do. So I'm going to start off with the first case is let's say you're still in school. I'd say this is the best situation to be in because you have professors as nice resources where you could possibly work in research labs. You have clubs at universities where you can participate in different robotics clubs, for example. You also have other peers which you can work with and collaborate with. And you also have courses that usually have projects in them where you can actually gain experience that's related to what you want to do. Personally, this is the route that I took when I was back in UCLA 10 years ago. One of the biggest projects that had the most impact on my career was for my senior design project. I had to design an autonomous robot that had to do pick and place for billiard balls, go up a ramp, and then dump the balls into this area. So during this project, I learned a lot about mechanical design, the controls, integration with sensors, and coding in LabVIEW, which is a headache, but definitely I learned a lot during the process. The second thing that probably had the most impact on my career was when I did my master's. I had a class on robotics, and this class I did a project on controlling a robot arm, which I learned a lot of skills that's very practical in industry. So overall, I would say if you're still in school, definitely utilize the resources that you have when you're there, and this is the best time for you to gain experience. So does that mean you should get an advanced degree, like a master's or a PhD? Well, the answer to that question is pretty complicated. It really depends on what career path you want to do and what specific job that you want. So certain companies have a pretty hard requirement on having an advanced degree. And there's other companies like Tesla, for example, that just cares about your experience. So you're going to have to study carefully the job description and see what the requirements are. But generally speaking, what I would say is that typically companies that look for skills that involve developing something innovative, they will typically want you to have an advanced degree. But if it's more application based, then typically those type of jobs don't have such a hard requirement. But that's just a general rule. It's going to be case by case, like I said earlier. So the best thing to do is to do your own due diligence and research yourself. So what if you already graduated or you're looking to transition your career into robotics? So this is where having an independent project or an online course project will really help boost your resume. So the reason why this helps is because, as I said before, when you have your employer and they're looking to hire you, they're going to want to compare their job description with your resume. So if there are certain features or key points on the job description that they're looking for, they're going to try to see if your resume have the same overlap to decide if you're a good fit for the job. I have a real world robotics course that's coming up where you're going to gain a lot of experience that you can put on your resume that will really stand out among the other applicants where it integrates different things like kinematics and vision for a real project using ROS that will take you from simulation to hardware. And you get a full community where you get to discuss things, network, and have a lifetime access to that. If that's something you're interested in, I have a waitlist link in the description below.
So let's walk through a concrete example so you could use the same framework that I'm about to show you to any type of jobs that you want to apply for. So here I'm looking at a senior robotics software engineer job from Figure. So normally on the top they have some description, but generally you can see that this job right here is in the controls and motion planning team. So right away when I see that, I know that, okay, it's probably good to have a project that's related to controls and motion planning, and here it mentions humanoids, so anything with an arm might be a pretty good project. So in the beginning, it says here's the responsibilities. So this is a typical structure of a resume. And you can see that here it says architect, design, implement, and test time critical software. So what this part means is it could involve real-time applications. And here we see development of control software. So data analysis and visualization tools, tools for enable rapid algorithm tuning and simulation and on hardware tools to enable debugging of control algorithms such as log replay. So you can see here that these are the typical skills that someone looks for. So when you're trying to find a project, you want to ask yourself by the end of this project, will I learn these key things that this job is looking for? So like the project that I mentioned earlier, the type of things that you might get out of that is, you know, algorithm tuning because we're using ROS and you could do simulation in ROS and then you have the option to test on hardware. So of course, every project that you try to do is going to be very difficult for one single project to capture every single bullet point. So that's why it's usually good to have one or two or even up to three projects that touch on different aspects. So it makes your skill set more complete. So here you can see we have the experience to developing production quality software. So this part is going to be a little bit harder because you can't really have the full experience of working in production, but the best you can do is if you're having an independent project, for example, is to treat it like production quality. And here we have some full stack software experience and C++ and Python. So again, the course I mentioned to you, we're going to be using C++ and Python, so that would be something useful. And here at the end, you can see there's some bonus qualifications. So things like understanding and using the Eigen library. We also have different build systems. And here are some soft skills like eagerness to learn and understand control algorithms. So I would say this part by demonstrating you being able to take on a project by yourself, you're showing the initiative and the eagerness to learn. So all of these things, you kind of want to work backwards. So again, just to summarize, we looked at this resume, we picked out the key skills that this resume talked about. Then you want to really think about, okay, when I do this project, am I going to learn these key skills? And will this demonstrate these skills to my future employer? And how could this project that I'm working on also showcase some of the soft skills that they're looking for? If you'd like to have more robotics and AI resources, check out the links in the video description and subscribe for more.